All right, what's going on? What's up, everybody? This is David Greenspan, and you are either watching us live, you're watching this recording, or maybe you're even listening to the Mindshare podcast, a proud member of the Industry Syndicate Media Network. Additional podcasts are available at industrysyndicate.com and mindshare101.com. This week's episode is sponsored by Kids Keep in Touch Systems. This is episode 51. So she's one of only 100 speakers selected out of over 500 to speak at the Realtor Conference and Expo six times over. She has been the closing keynote speaker for Inman Connect. She is a licensed managing broker, a realtor, an avid volunteer, and a major donor. She is also an international best-selling author of a title called The Modern Real Estate Professional's Guide to Success. In 2019, she was nominated as Riz Media's Real Estate Newsmaker and was inducted into the Reback Hall of Fame. Dedicated to all things real estate and over 25 years of experience, she has taught over 300,000 realtors how to earn up to 2,682% ROI on their marketing dollars. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Management, a Master's in Business Administration, and over 50 real estate-related licenses, certifications, and designations. It is an absolute honor to welcome the one and only Marky lamons Raihal to the Mindshare podcast today. Marky, thank you for joining us. I was looking for I was looking for my Reback Hall of Fame plate because they sent me home with this big plate from NAR. But you know what? I have my my good golden pen here. It even has a nice little stone in it. Uh, as I was searching for where is all my stuff? What's going on today? Yeah, well, listen, babe. Based on everything that I just read off there, I, I don't know if you can find everything you've got kicking around. But hey, listen, you and I met. Uh, we we had met a few weeks ago in San Fran while we were both speakers at the NAR conference. And now, I will say for anybody who hasn't been there, uh, if you haven't been there, we are going to be back in New Orleans next year, uh, 2020. Make sure, mark your calendars. But you and I had bumped into each other on the trade floor one morning, got to talk, and we did that. And, and it was funny, because although we hadn't spoken much before, we were both very familiar with each other because of social media. And yes. so when we did meet in person, it was like, yeah, what's going on? As if we had actually already met before, right? <laughs> now, the power of social media is absolutely incredible. We've got a lot of people that are on it. But many of zero idea how to properly leverage it. Now, my faithful listeners know, and they already know this, but for anyone new to the show, including you, Marky, I want to mention that I'm all about building Mindshare and helping my audience build that Mindshare. In other words, how can they build their brand and increase their ROI? So my goal is always to provide tips and strategies for how they can do this. Now, you are an expert in all of this. And with all those licenses, certifications, designations, and everything you've achieved to date, I cannot wait for you to drop some knowledge here. But first, I want to set the stage. I was on your website the other day, and I was reading through some of your info, and somewhere you had mentioned that a while ago, and I think you were on mat leave at the time, you had decided to Google yourself. And when you did that, you weren't very excited about what you found. Can you take us back there for a moment? Oh, yes. I'll take you back to 2006. I was, well, let me, let me reference. I was in the top 10% of realtors in the city of Chicago, and I was doing roughly about $12 million in volume annually. And I believed, I believe in marketing. I actually have an MBA degree in marketing and had already taught uh, marketing courses on a collegiate level. So at the time I had a, a my Mercedes station wagon, it was wrapped, it had homes to sell.net, which was a company I had at the time. I had bus benches, billboards, I was doing a monthly direct mail campaign, and I had a classified ad that ran in the back of the Sun Times. But when I was at home on maternity leave, I'm reading at the time the 2006 profile of buyers and sellers from the National Association of Realtors. And there's a, a line of numbers, and I still use them today because I need everybody to understand how my mind clicked. It told me that in 1995, 2% of buyers were utilizing the internet in their search for real estate. But when I was at home on maternity leave, this number was 80%. So I'm doing some math, you know, I'm like, man, that's a 78% increase. I haven't seen anything that has had that substantial increase in a 10-year right. period of time. So I said, okay, uh, clearly they use using the internet. And I had a website, homestosell.net, and I had a <laughs> MySpace account. And I said, mm, I know 
they know me online. I've always been pretty popular offline, so I'm just going to make the assumption that it correlated to online. <laughs> and uh, I decided to Google my name, and my name came up less than 10 times. And I realized at that moment, girl, you're not hanging out online where the buyers and the sellers are hanging out. What are you going to do about it? And I had a friend, his name is uh, Freddie Taylor. He actually owns Urban Intellectuals. He sells um, uh, playing cards. And he was like, you're going to have to use Facebook. And my words to him exactly were, I am pregnant on maternity leave. Who got time to tell Facebook anything. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't on Matt Leaf at the time, but I remember the conversation I had with somebody going, the face what? <laughs> the fr- right. And here's the thing. <laughs> Even until today, my husband still until today does not have a Facebook account. And he believes that Facebook is the work of the devil. Okay. okay. Um, so he has a Twitter account and that's the only account that he utilizes. So he's and on so, social. Okay. Right. So no, he's not, uh, no, no, he doesn't <laughs> believe in it. And, and here's the thing. I'm 100% okay with that. I'm not trying to sell him on it. Um, he makes his comments. I make my comments. My comments are always back with information, stats, report, things of that nature. And I'm okay with him not believing in it. But I will tell you how it works, though, in the dynamics of a marriage. My husband cannot do anything, anything in the city of Chicago without someone telling me or letting him know that they know who he is. So my husband does not have a Facebook account. But if he's at the grocery store, if he's at a party, if I don't care what he's doing in the city of Chicago, people walk up to him. And they tell him all the time, man, I know you. I know you from Facebook. You are Marky's husband. Ah, and, okay. and, and as I tell him all the time, you don't have to have a Facebook account. But these women out here know you belong to me. So, and, 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 and job done. <laughs> That's it, eh? So is he a believer? Yeah. He's a believer. <laughs> And oh, so, know so, it. <laughs> so, so, but that's interesting what you said there, because that's one thing that I talk a lot about with uh, my students, with, you know, my audiences, everybody that I'm, I'm working with is that we've got two audiences, right? We've got the people we know, and we've got the people we don't know. Um, and again, my listeners are going, Dave, I know this one. Here's why I bring this up though. Cause Mark, you just mentioned that just before you did the whole online thing, you had the car wrapped, you had the direct mail, you had all that stuff going on. You had the bus benches and the buses. And I mean, you drive around town, you go, I see this lady everywhere, right? Now it was a thing where you're going, okay, technology is moving ahead. And I know that people are online. I've got to get online because I'm not online. Apparently I'm not there. I haven't got a presence. In that, I still look at all that bus bench and everything else. I mean, the newsletter, was the newsletter going to a contact list or was it going to like uh, what we call a farm area, just like a, a postal walk? It was going to, um, it, I had two direct mail pieces. So one okay, cool. was going to a contact list and one was going to a farm area. Uh, and if I was to move forward, that farm area, if I mail to it now, I will also do a Facebook ad okay. over that area. Okay, so, perfect. But because we were just back. talking about that in my mind share challenge. We just literally wrapped up the eight week course yesterday. And in week seven, we talked about prospecting with a purpose. And I introduced you to social media farming, right? So if you're going to have that, flyer drop and you're going to have the bus bench you're going to have all the mass advertising which in my mind it in my mind mathematically it costs you a lot of money you better be supporting those efforts with your direct mail to a contact list with your organic social media which i want to talk more about and with going out and doing the social media farming where now you're leveraging some facebook ads some social media ads some online ads maybe it's google youtube whatever amazon whatever you're using there you're leveraging that to be able to get your name out so that when people go online, it's supporting. When people see you while they're driving, it's supporting. When they're at home, it's supporting. And that there's my thing about building Mindshare. So you, you, uh, you acknowledge that for yourself very quickly, and you started to change everything you were doing there. Yes. So to now the, point the online, that, right? Mm-hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so to the point that my cousin, she left in 1986 to go to college, 86, yeah. right? She was back this summer. We were standing on a corner, 43rd and Ellis, at a place called Norm's Bistro. People are walking up to me. They're hugging me. But she hears them consistently say, Marky, you don't know me. Marky, we've yeah. never met, yeah. right? So my cousin, she crosses her arms. She sits back and she uh, shucks her teeth. And she says, 
mm, mm. so you a celebrity now <laughs> and it was kind of funny but it, it that that wasn't the only time that happened two weeks ago i go to a formal event is at the hyatt regency it's uh the women of excellence with chicago defender magazine four people came up to me told me they did not know me and wanted to know why wasn't I receiving the award because we follow you on Facebook. We saw your video. Ooh, I listened to your podcast. I'm not even in real estate and your podcast has helped That's me. Cool. So these people do not know me. We've never met face to face, but what they get offline is what they get online and yes. they approach me because at the moment I seem non-approachable in person, they're going to disconnect from me and my brand. And that's a big deal. I mean, hey, uh, again, back to what I said a moment ago, what we hadn't met before. We'd only seen each other in the speakers group for <laughs> NAR. I'm walking through the trade hall. I see you standing there. I'm like, yo, you're like, what's up? It Right away, though, the same, I mean, I try to live exactly the same way. You're going to see... You're going to see, I mean, you're not going to see everything, but you're going to see what I want you to see. You're going to see enough where a lot of people question. They go, why are you sharing all that with the world? Why do you tell everybody about that? Why? Because I want you to understand that what you get right there is the same guy you're getting right here. Take it or leave it. I mean, in most cases, obviously, we always hope you take it, but it is who we are. And if you don't like it, that's cool too. You're not going to like everything that I put out. Not everybody's going to like everybody and that's okay. And that's a big thing. You know what? That's a big moment right there for everybody. It's important that you understand, no matter what, you're going to have people that don't like. So before you click post, before you step out of the house in the morning, understand there's going to be some people that don't like the way that you drive. They don't like the way you dress. They may tell you, they may not tell you. Who cares? Because there's so many other people out there that actually, in fact, do like and are happy and do want to hear from you. And even those people will very rarely, as we were talking about offline beforehand, why do we always talk about the bad and not the good? Most people don't tell you when you're doing amazing. They're only going to tell you when they think you made a mistake. And that's a big fear. That's a big fear for a lot of people, right? Because we've got a lot of people that uh, they want to get on social media. They want to start. They, they, you know, they want to be there, but they're scared of what people think. And they're scared of technology. So how does somebody who is scared of what others think and who is scared of technology, I'm going to steal your words now, how do they stay sane in the face of it all? Well, the first thing, I use it because the number said I needed to use it. And what I was thinking about was my long-term or my exit strategy. So when I start thinking about when I plan to retire, uh, it's pretty much public knowledge. I'm married to a locomotive engineer. The day he retires, I'm retiring because I will get a spousal funded pension plan from and Union that, that's Pacific it. Railroad. That's the way it's going. Right. So that's, that's how that's running. So with that being said, um, I will retire at the age of 63. Well, if I look at from today, I'm not 50 yet. I'm going to have to communicate effectively with millennials because they're the biggest consumer generation ever. But that is going to be the buyers and sellers at the time that I retire. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I went what, in 2006, and decided to start implementing change to retire successfully. So it was, it's very much, it was very much a business decision for me. And the way that I tell people who are 40 and under, because you can't call me, you cannot call me T.T. Markey if you're over the age of 40, because I'm 49. <laughs> but if you're under 40, I want to be viewed as the favorite aunt of yeah. anyone 40 years and younger today. I want them to be able to come to me with their real estate related questions. And you know how that favorite aunt didn't judge you. She just told you the real. That is yeah. who I want people to perceive me as. And so far it's working because I got a bunch of people running around here calling me TT. Yeah. And, and I only have one niece, right? But I got a bunch, I only have one biological niece, but a lot of people calling me TT. Um, and so what I wanted to do was I wanted to implement change then. And I knew what I did not want to look like. And so I forced myself to learn something new every single day in order to remain relevant with the buyers and sellers that were emerging essentially at the time, but I knew would dominate the industry by the time I was going to leave it. So it, that is, okay. So then there, there is, there is a, a, uh, a motivation for you to be present where these people are. Oh, most definitely. But that's because what broke down the barrier then. That says, hey, wait, down. I got to be there. No matter, no matter be my them. insecurities, no matter what I think, no matter what other people think, I got to be there. 
But let me go to the insecurity. Um, yep. As you might well have heard this before, I am the shortest, darkest, roundest person in the room with the least amount of hair. I have heard I, you say this before. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really have to probably go back and attribute it to my mother. My parents were teen parents, right? And my mother was my number one cheerleader. She believed in me. She loved me unconditionally. And it was always go for it. And so when I say that, I've always been that person. I cut my hair off at 16 living in Reykjavik, Iceland. How many 16-year-olds from the south side of Chicago live in Reykjavik, Iceland, right? So, well, but, yeah, but cutting your hair off, it would get cold. Well, here's the thing. I didn't take the right adapters for the curling iron, and I didn't want my hair looking crazy all summer, okay. so I cut it off, right? Um, and when I got back, it was, it was, I was freed, right? It's like, uh, yeah, no, I don't need to go to the beauty shop and sit for hours. I'm gonna go to the barber shop oh, and hang out go. with the handsome men. And I've been hooked every since. <laughs> I've been hooked every since. Truth be told. Um, and so when it came to uh, real estate and changing my marketing, I was always accustomed to being a little bit different. And even now I'm a little bit different or the fact that I don't have on makeup right now to do our videos. What I'm clear about is people do not care about how I look. They care if I can solve their buying and selling problems. And people have seen enough content of me online to know that um, th this is what you might see some days, but I can get as clean as the cleanest of them can get. So they've seen the range, right? But that same Marky, that same character shows up regardless to if I'm sitting in the boardroom or if you catch me standing on the corner of 59th and State or in the community called Inglewood, they're still going to get that same smile, speak, cordial, uh, let me get that for you, Marky. I'm that person all the time. And I just got to the point, I don't care what other people think. If I'm doing what's right, and this came out, uh, it actually just came out of church, it says to be God-like. Um, if I'm being God-like and I'm doing what is right and what's nice and what's proper, uh, and I'm not doing things to self-serve, I don't care what other people think. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a series on that. You can't tell me nothing. So I want my fellow real estate professionals to get over how they believe that they look, how they believe that they sound. Because if we just go back to uh, the MREA book, I'm looking to see if I see it behind me. You have a one in six chance of converting people you meet face to face versus one in 50 online. The only way, and the reason that I know that I'm successful, my conversion rates are more towards the one in six because of all the video content that I have online because right. people feel as if they already there. know me. And there's the key to video. That's it. They feel like they yeah. know you. All the, these people walk up. They look. They walk up to my husband, and they don't know him, and he don't even have a Facebook account. These people have never met this man a day before in their life, and they say, "Oh, you Marky's husband." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell me this then, right? Because I believe strongly that yes, you have to be the same person online that you are offline. You have to be the same per person when people meet you that they see, you know, in your posts and, and sound the same. Because it's funny, I get people, you know, I see the comments and I see them. I see them. Trust me, you know who you are. But people who are saying to me or, or who will post in a group and they will say something, does he always sound that way? Does he always talk like that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ask my wife. And now people will say, as you always got that much energy, she goes, listen, everybody likes to sit down on the couch and, you know, watch a good movie. So take it easy there, right? <laughs> but the reality is, yeah, you know what? Like, what you see is what you get. And that's why leveraging social media, quite frankly, is easy. But it's easy because we decided to click the button. It's easy because we got comfortable in our own skin. It's easy because we accepted who we are. And then we decided to just be us. And hey, you know what? You get a little fuel to your fire after that where you start to go, wait a second. This is all right. I'm comfortable. I'm good. Now, I believe this, that is all what we call the organic game, right? That is us being organic with who we are and just, just leverage. I mean, it's like walking outside or making a phone call right now. We go onto Facebook and we do the exact same thing. We're just who we are. There's a lot of people that want to be on social media and decide that they're going to go spend a whole bunch of money to be on social media. When to me, it's like, yo, do you realize it's a button? You can click it for free, right? It doesn't make sense to me that people are spending so much money. Now, I'm not saying don't spend the money. When I come back to the two groups, it is always about the budgeting. It's always about the strategy. You know, where are you spending? What kind of ROI are you getting? Who is your target audience? All that other stuff. But they want to just spend. 
with all of that, what's your take on this? Do people need to spend money on social media or what, what should they be doing to, to really grow their brand? And then what are some of those daily non-negotiables that people need to be following every single day if, again, they want to take that online presence to that next level? I believe in content creation. So I create so much content that I spend very little money. I mean very little money on advertising because I am in constant content creation mode. If you look at all of these recent buyouts of all of these different media companies, it's 100% about content, right? It's, it's why you got the Netflix and the Amazon. Yeah. Like it's so all these channels, these new channels that did not exist. And that is because they are creating original content. Think about industry syndicate, right? Yeah. Content. And, and, and look, we're all going to push probably to come up with some original content for it. Right. Um, so with all of that being said, I don't spend a lot of money on, I, I spend money in my company, but I published a book for credibility. Yeah. Uh, I have a podcast. So I have a whole podcast production team where we're recording a video like this. It becomes a podcast, an email, a blog post, but I'm putting out content, good content every single day. My one non-negotiable everybody needs to create one minute of video content Monday through Friday. Every Here's day? Why. At Monday through Friday. Um, Saturday okay, and Sunday. Five, I'll give so you a break. five days a week, though, every day, one go minute. online. Now, is this a live? Is this recorded? Is this is this uh, uh, Instagram and or Facebook stories? Where would they be posting this? I think it should be live or stories, which okay, is cool. essentially almost live, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I, here's the reason. Two different for the feeds, one minute. though, so that Two doesn't matter feeds. to you. You're just going, hey, be there. Be there. Okay, here's cool. but here's why though, when we think about content, right? Vertical or stories. Uh, the way I'm holding my phone is yep. the fastest growing form of content in the history of the internet okay stories disappear every 24 hours right there's 500 million engagements on instagram stories alone with over 1 billion people on the platform uh, instagram, instagram is owned by facebook so i, I let me I'm, I'm always thinking about the logic and the numbers of this yep. right so i, I need to that. create one minute of video content just to be relevant in the story feed and if you look at stories you could add snapchat to that so snapchat Instagram stories, Facebook stories, right? I need to have one minute of video content. And what blows my mind is how many people want to navigate the importance of video. Nothing performs like video. And in the video space, nothing performs like live streaming video. So if you want the biggest bang and buck for your time, you need to do live content. There is a post, uh, and they've actually have a mathematical calculation. They used to say that a picture's worth a thousand words. Yep. If a picture's worth a thousand words, one minute of video content is equivalent to 1.8 million words. So Monday through Friday, you create one minute of video content. Therefore, you're creating 1.8 million uh, words of value. OK. And in addition to that, I believe that they should go live like we're going. Every podcaster and we're talking even in the top 25 real estate podcast in this country, all of them attribute live streaming video to their success. Nothing is performing like it. And I use video to create essentially sales funnels. So I'll use a tool with a landing page, whether it's an MLS related to whether it's lead pages, click funnels, Google Forms, you name it. Right. Yep. And and if you if I'm giving you something good, good, then I need your contact information for that good, good information. Right. OK. In exchange. Right. We, we make an affair swap. No swindle exchange here. And so non-negotiable one minute of video content. Okay. I believe that real estate professionals on their calendar should have one hour of lead generation Monday through Friday. Inside of that lead generation, there should be social media and technology including the one minute of video, but here's really why the one hour. There's no place outside of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, essentially those top three, where people tell you all their business in real time and you get to listen for no cost. Right, right. So someone said, well, you can go to a bar, but I, if, I'm, if I'm at a bar and I'm sitting, if I'm at a bar sitting at the bar on a bar stool, I got to buy a cocktail. No one lets you sit. Think about this. <laughs> Right. It's you don't true. get to sit I'm at the bar you. and You're you don't buy a drink. The choir right? here. OK, I get to come home. I can have my iPad, my phone, my computer in the comforts of my bed. Right. 
and I can listen. Not only can I listen to your information in real time, I can cross reference because I have multiple devices. There's nothing like it, right? And then I can make the choice to create content that solves your issues because you let me know you got some problems, right? Because creating this content makes me an authority at what it is I say that I do where I say that I do it. Yep. Yep. And but here's the disconnect, which no one is addressing. Most people come into real estate and they don't realize they're entrepreneurs. And as a result of being independent contractors, they're supposed to generate their own leads. Right. Let's okay. just go with the, yeah, let's yeah. just go with the yeah, problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But they, but they, okay. But this is, this is very similar to a conversation I had with uh, some of the hockey buddies mm-hmm. where I was standing around with one guy, younger guy, he's working for one of the banks and he says, I'm not really using Facebook. And I said, why? He says, well, you know, I'm not, just, nah, I'm not into it. I said, but you're in sales. He said, yeah. I said, okay, we got 15 of us standing around right now. Does everybody know what you do? He goes, yeah, I think so. I said, okay, that's a problem right there. They got to know what you do. That's, that's number one. But let's assume they do know what you do. There's only 15 of them. I opened up this thing and I went, okay, I'm going to jump on here right now. I'm going to go to Facebook. I'm going to go to Instagram. And I can tell thousands of people what you do. I said, why wouldn't you take advantage of that? You see, the way I look at the whole social media thing, this is like you're going to the gym, you're working out, you're eating well, you know, things are going well. And I just come along and offer you some steroids. You're going to get bigger faster. It's just the way it is. You can talk to more people. I mean, we talk about Facebook groups, right? Uh, And I've said this one to people before as well. Facebook groups, you would never, when you go to that bar, that cocktail, uh, that coffee shop, get your coffee, turn around, see a place full of of people, no table to sit down. Most people just wouldn't sit down at a random table and go, excuse me, I'm just going to sit down here and have my coffee. And what are you guys talking about? Let me start talking with you. Most people just wouldn't do it. Maybe some of us would, but most people wouldn't. Whereas when you get onto social media, you can jump into any group, any conversation at any moment, and people will react. They will converse with you. They will, they will in fact, they will reciprocate, and, and then other people will start to talk. You're building more mind share. You're starting to add value. You're starting to just talk with people. You're connecting. You're building relationships. I mean, there is the power of getting online and breaking down the mold because most people won't do it. Most people are stalkers. Most people are just watching the conversation happen. They're not saying anything. They're not clicking on anything. They're just scrolling. You know, those, those people there, like you are not taking advantage. And, and so here, one question I also get asked a lot is, Dave, how often should I be posting? And my response, and we know this one, and you know this one, it's not how often, it's about the value that you provide as well, right? You got to be saying something of value. You got to be teaching something or, or giving me something. And, and like we just said, what are those problems you're going to solve for me? You got to be sharing that. What do you say to that? Is there, I mean, you said one minute every day, love it. Uh, is there a certain time of the day? Should I be posting other stuff in a day? If I just focused on my one minute a day, am I doing enough? What should I be doing? What's your take on that? How often? So how often is based on engagement. Okay. If you're not getting any engagement, then you need to change the con- You need to change the whole parameter. You need to change everything. Okay. Because it's about engagement. I looked at someone's profile yesterday. They're in marketing. They have like 15,000 posts on Instagram and like 2000 followers. Okay. That lets me know people don't care about what yeah. it is that you are talking about and you're an overshare. Um, I told you that earlier that I deleted someone yesterday, one, yep. because I didn't like the content they mm-hmm. had posted. But when I went back and I looked at their feed, I am consistently, consistently um, disconnecting from people who only reshare other people's content and they don't have original Thought. can't stand that and they don't even say anything when they share it they just share it they just share it right so no if context. you don't have an original thought i cannot i cannot publicly be your friend that, that, that i'm just going to say what it is i yeah. cannot we're not yeah. going to have that relationship um and so one you want to look at engagement that will dictate what you should do if you should do it less or if you should come with more meaningful content you want to sit back and listen first and see what people, what their problems are, and you want to be the solution to the problem, okay? So I, some of my posts aren't always popular posts, okay? And I get that. So they're not going to always be popular. I post a couple of times 
per day, essentially on every platform. Mm -hmm. I do do stories every single day. And I'm going to come with one or two pieces of what I consider to be really good content. Because I speak and I teach, then I need to bring something of edu educational value because that's what I say that I do. Yep. I'm clear that people, everyone's not going to do business with me. My personality is not for everyone. It's a big personality. But what you cannot tell me is that you don't know what I do. Right. I, you, no one can say they don't know what Marky does. They can Marky's say, yeah. Marky's built mind share. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they can say, ah, you know, I don't like her. Uh, you know, um, she over the top. You know, they can say that. And I get it. I'm not for everyone. And I don't get offended when people don't do business with me. But you will not lie to my face and tell me you don't know what I do. I remember right. someone told me, um, yeah, you know, I was looking for you online and I didn't find you. I said, let me be clear with you. The only way you don't find me online is because you spell my name incorrectly. <laughs> I, own, right? I own my government name all over the internet. So, so they can't say they don't know how to find me. They can't say they don't know what I do. All they can say is, yeah, I don't know if I want to deal with her. Not a problem. It's not for everyone. So you want to own, you're in a business, right? You want people to talk about what it is that you do. It baffles me how many people have private accounts and private What's posts. What's with that? Well, first of all, they're not thinking logically. And, I, and I'm not, let me, I'm going to just leave it there. They're not thinking logically. How Here's do you follow anybody has got a private account? You don't even know what you're following. Well, he, here's the problem. How many real friends? do you have in life? I, uh, you might be able to count on your hand. Less than five. Right. Every grown people. Like dinner less table, than five. come to my home, sit at my dinner table. Yeah. Less than five. Right. Yep. With that being said, we're talking about a minimum. I've seen somebody with 145, right? That means that 140 aren't your friends. Anything that you're posting behind what you consider to be privacy, they can take a screenshot of that content and share it with the world. Right. So your text message, aren't private. Your yeah. emails aren't private. Nothing you say in a private group is private. And your private account is not private because we're clear as grown people, we have fewer than five real friends. That means they can take a screenshot of anything you just posted and, it and share there. it with the world for you. I, it's, it, it's the craziest thing in the world. Well, I don't want so-and-so to see this, or I don't want people to see my kids. If you don't want people to see your kids, Right. First of all, that's impossible today. Yeah, but if you yeah, don't want yeah. people to see your kids, one, don't post them. But as I've explained to parents, if your children are active and most of them want their children to be active, their parents, soccer game, baseball game, basketball game, dance recital, the list goes on. When they post the picture and the videos of their children, they're not cropping your child out. Right. Right. And that, there, there's the thing about, again, getting out there, connecting with people, letting people into the real world of what's going on. Uh, and a friend of ours, Chelsea, said, it, you know, again, uh, tell them you're on date night. You don't have to tell them what you're doing on date night or what you're talking about, but you can talk about the fact that you're there. And again, you're letting people in to what's going on. It, it, it's that whole privacy thing. People are very scared of it. But, you know, this comes back to my whole thing about, you know, the websites. We were just talking about websites the other day in, in, in one of our sessions of the challenge. And, you know, I was asking people, says, is your contact info on your website? Or are you a secret agent? Right? If you're a secret agent, who do you expect is going to find you? You know, I got to go to 17 different pages on your site to figure out what your phone number is or your email address or your email is here. You see, maybe your email's not even there. Oh, I don't want people spamming me. Yeah, I'll get with it. This is email. That's the way it is these days. People will find your contact information and send it to you. Make it easy to connect. Now, looking at the time, I want to switch gears here for a minute, okay? Okay. Um, all this goes hand in hand together, together uh, becoming better versions of ourselves. And with that, Mindset is crucial to success. And every time I'm talking to you, I can see the mindset there. I love it. Um, a few years ago, I got to tell you, I had to change my mindset. And, you know, I was going down a bad mental path, um, needed to change. I mean, long story short, it's just, it's one of those where you're, 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 I'm, I always want to run before I can walk. And so I'm always looking at like, okay, I'm moving that, I'm moving fast. Is everything else moving as fast as I am? And it's like, shit, come on, pick up, let's go, bring it, right? But it's one of those where, and when, when it's not moving as fast as you, you're kind of going, okay, what am I doing wrong? Or is there something going wrong? So you're trying to figure these things out, right? And what I started to do was I started to begin uh, to practice intention setting and gratefulness. And let me tell you, anyone who knows me from back in the day who would look and go, Greenspan, gratefulness? Intention setting? Are you kidding me? This guy's not, what? 
their jaw would hit the floor right now. Those same people, though, to look at me today and those ones who know me and see where I am today, they also know that there is a major difference and that I am truly, like you, living what I do. I build mind share. That's what I do. And, and back then, it was a, a joke about it. You know, the buddies, Dave, you doing mind share today? Hell yeah. And today, it's like, yeah, you know it. And now they want to wear a mind share hat. You know what I mean? And so people recognize what's going on. But all of this through gratefulness, through intention setting. Now, looking at your site, I noticed that you talk about committing 60 minutes each morning to a life of sales. And I read it at first, and then I realized what sales really stood for. Can you tell us what this all means? Like, what does sales stand for? What is this whole thing? And, and, and why should anybody do, be doing this? Like, what, what should they be doing? Well, it's actually based off of the Miracle Morning. Um, okay, I've heard of that one. And let me say this. Uh, I was born and raised in the restaurant business. My undergrad degree is in hospitality management. I thought I would do nothing in life but sell barbecue. I went through a bitter lawsuit with my family. Essentially, my father, sister sued me. I countersued them. They had to buy me out. Oh. Um, I came immediately into real estate uh, because of the, <laughs> go figure this, the low barriers to entry at the time. I came in as a loan originator, actually, and I never left the industry. With that being said, uh, I had a I had a lot of loss. So I've been through the landmark form, all about being intentional, right? I read uh, The Secret, watched The Secret uh, movie. Mm -hmm. um, I then bought the book, The One Thing. And in every book, right, I learned something new. So when we start thinking about- um, Food for the brain. Food for the brain, right? When I start thinking about um, a life of sales, right? Every, every day we need some silence. First of all, you, where do your big ideas come from? And it's hard to come up with great new big ideas, right? <laughs> um, if there's a lot of chatter. Actually, every morning in the shower, something great hits me. Wait, every where do you write it down? Morning. I've been trying to figure out, where do I write stuff down? down. I start writing it in the, in, the, in the door, you know, with the, the, the steam. It, and by the time have, you're done, the shower is gone. It's I'm like, gone. damn. You can get, you can get erasables <laughs> uh, that you can write actually on the shower. And then some people record uh, audio in the shower with a, um, a waterproof um, oh gadget. Okay, so the audio or there are these special markers that you can actually write uh, on the shower. Okay. So that would be two. So silence. The next one is affirmation. You have to affirm it. You have to believe it. Now, it might come across as being arrogant to some people. That lets me know that they haven't implemented affirmations in their life. But how is it that I'm the shortest, darkest, roundest person in the room with the least amount of hair, but I had 10 events at the Realtor Conference and Expo because I'm consistently affirming over my life what I am going to have. And you have to start with I am. So I believe in affirmations. And with the company I'm with, actually, they're in Canada. They have an app called prompter app. And then the prompter, every single day, you're writing down 12 different affirmations and they put it into gamification. The L stands for lead generation, period. You have to generate leads. This is a lead gen business. If you don't generate leads, you're going to actually have to buy them from someone. Then you, you got to have your exercise, right? And, and, and you got to exercise your brain and you have to physically exercise. Uh, you need to build up the exercising of the brain and the body for any time you're under attack, you have more strength uh, resistance. And then uh, the last S is scripts, right? Everything in real estate is a script. But today is not your typical script, right? Today we have bots and automated systems. Now, let me say this, the bot should not do all the work. Right. The bot should be the engager and we should actually interrupt the conversation to bring that human element and one-on-one -on -one to the situation. So I believe that you should, every real estate professional should lead a life of sales and you want to be intentional about protecting your time. All of this came from, get this, I used to, at one time, I was not a morning person. My youngest son went from a B-level school to an A-level school. The B-level school started at 9 o'clock. I was turning on two wheels, dropping him off, pushing him out the car door because we were late every day. At the moment he got into the A-level school, the A-level school starts at 7.30 a.m. I have my son on the bus stop on time every morning at 6.55 a.m. So I became a morning person because I wanted the best education for my why. Love it. And you say you use a calendar and I preach use a calendar. People are like, oh, oh I'm yes. late, I'm late, I'm sorry, I'm late. No, 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 oh, you no. can't be sorry you're late. You weren't using a calendar properly. I have a paper calendar 
I have a, I even carry a notebook and mind you, I'm high tech and I have a calendar schedule for every freaking thing. So I have electronic with a daily reminder yep. with pop-up notifications, paper and a journal. Because if that's what, at the moment I stepped away from paper and a journal, star stuff, the stuff was not going the way I wanted it to go. And so I went, actually, I took it away and then brought it back because I realized I complete more tasks when you physically write it down. Because that's actually you affirming it, right? Yep. And so if you write it down, you say it, it is more likely to occur. So, and, and we could go back to the law of attraction uh, in, in that process as well. You know what? It's uh, I was going to say, you know, um, between the two of us, this show could go on for like literally 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I think um, <laughs> you are absolutely we had a good time. At the oh, 100 percent. I was, was going to say like we, we both have other things to do today. And I was going to say, give me some <laughs> last words of inspiration. But uh, I want to end on what you just said, because uh, one, we went through uh, sales, which was the silence, the affirmations, the lead gen, the exercise and the scripting. Uh, so everybody pay attention to that one. Uh, the other one there was the calendar. And to me, that's a big deal because I tell people line item everything. Like if, if a lunch comes up right now and you got to go to it, go to your calendar for a minute, put it in there and make sure you mark it down. Because at the end of the day, you can look back at that calendar, give yourself a pat on the back and say, look what I accomplished today. And you can look back and go, look what I did not get to today. And here's why I messed up or here's why I won. So, I mean, with everything you just shared, I mean, to me, there, there's the parting words. Um, this has been awesome. As I well, knew thank was. you for having me. I oh appreciate my God. it. Thank you for making the time. Marky, where can people go to find you? And I, I think it goes without saying, just go online. Just go online if you spell <laughs> my name correctly. Marky Lemons, M-A-R-K-I-L-E-M-O-N-S. My international best-selling book, The Modern Real Estate Professional's Guide to Success is available on Amazon. You can actually download it. Go download it, 99 Do cents. It. And then uh, my podcast, Social Selling Made Simple, will be joining Industry Syndicate. And so I'll be a part of the family. Yeah, we can't wait to have you. And 99 cents for a book. You can't get anything for 99 cents. So make sure you guys get to Amazon and check that out. Download that market. We are so excited to have you as part of the syndicate. Um, Thank you. To everybody. You're either watching us live, you're watching this recording, you're listening to this on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google, Stitcher, Spotify. Maybe you went to theindustrysyndicate.com. Maybe you downloaded our free Industry Syndicate podcast app. Or maybe you went to my website, mindshare101.com. Wherever you like to consume your content, please rate, review, subscribe. And if you haven't yet, connect with me on Facebook at Mindshare101 and on Instagram at David Greenspan 101 This has been another episode of the Mindshare podcast. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening.